So we are kind of late to the party on this one, and uh, I guess our thoughts on it aren't really going to inspire anyone else to see it. Ah, Legend of the Sword! Huh? No, on second thoughts, let's not go to Camelot. It is a silly place. So, King Arthur Legend of the Sword is the latest film directed by Guy Ritchie. It's obviously based on the legend of King Arthur. And uh, we didn't do any trailer reactions for this movie building up to its release, but we are actually, like, kind of excited for it. We saw that first trailer and we are like, Guy Ritchie doing a film like this is kind of exciting. We're Guy Ritchie fans. We absolutely loved The Man From U.N.C.L.E. And obviously, like, the Sherlock Holmes movies are pretty cool. Snatch is great. He's, he's just a really interesting director, so we were kind of keen for this. Watching the movie, um, there's a lot of stuff that was really exciting and the rest of it which was so bland and boring that I don't really know what's happening. But at the same time, I've got to say, no matter what, by the end of it, I did really enjoy this film. And so that's yeah. why I'm giving this... Oh wait, we need to review it. We need to cover it first though. <laughs> she. What just happened? But yes, this film stars Charlie Hunnam and Jude Law and they are both standouts. Yeah, they yeah. do a very, very good job. Jude Law is an incredible villain and Charlie Hunnam is always entertaining on screen. But that is the first thing I will touch on is Charlie Hunnam. What he does is he brings a very strong personality to every character that he plays. Got a lot Obviously... of swag. <laughs> But yes, a lot of personality to all the characters he plays. Obviously, if you've seen him play Jax in Sons of Anarchy, which I have, he's incredible and he knows how to act. So people out there who say he can't act, well, he can, so shut the fuck up. But what I'm getting at here is, the thing is with when he plays King Arthur, is obviously King Arthur goes through this kind of hero's journey and yeah. he needs to make decisions as in regards to, he has to make sacrifices along the way and he goes, no, I'm going to do this, I need to save our country, etc. and so forth. But Charlie Hunnam adds so much personality and fun to King Arthur, all of a sudden when he goes, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, because the guy's been game for everything so far, he's the kind of character that once we set, kind of see him set up, he'd be up for the challenge. He'd be completely up for it. That's the type of person he is. So every time he like he's got Excalibur and he throws it away and he's like, I can't do this, or he tells his team, I don't think I can do this, it's like, no, you can. You've shown us based on the first couple of scenes of seeing you in that you would be totally up for this. So it felt more like on a script level as opposed to performance, that the script was like, no, but we need to we need to give him obstacles. Whereas this guy just kind of would have just powered through it. And that would have been more entertaining in Guy Ritchie's style. Because when the film is going full Guy Ritchie, when there's conversations jumping back and forth and someone's describing what happened and showing something else happening and all that kind of stuff that we know from Guy Ritchie films that is when it is at its best yeah it was when, kind of, yeah it when was... it's not full Guy Ritchie it could have just been made by anyone it kind of just coasts it's got all these standard blockbuster elements that just don't really have any heft behind them it's not the film that this could have been yeah which is really frustrating and I mean like the the whole story it tries to stick to the law so much but at the same time it moves so far it away from it all, so, so it kind of like it's just this weird balance where it didn't go either way as strongly as it could have that first trailer was completely nuts, the one we got back at Comic Con last year. And that's what we thought we were in for. That's why we were so excited. It had all these, like, you're watching a medieval film with that kind of locked camera as they're like running type thing, and you're like, I haven't seen that before. That's really exciting. That's really fresh. That's really new. But every time that kind of thing wasn't happening, there's a big disparity between that high level of creativity and whatever I feel like Warner Brothers wanted Guy Ritchie to do. You feel like if they'd have just given him less money and it'd have been more constrained, there hadn't been as many like big VFX sequences. You would have had a much better movie. I think so. And I've got to admit, it started off really, really strongly. I yeah. loved the opening scene, obviously the whole kind of pre-story with Eric Banner. I really got around it and then the kind of like uh, follow up to that where we watch King Arthur or we watch Arthur through his, you know, like we growing watch him up. growing up. That was good. That was that, it was really exciting. It was fast paced and it got us just to get to know the character really, really quickly in like a, I mean, it, just an easy way. But then from then on in, it just kind of, you know, just bounced from spot to spot trying to get the job done. Mm. And then when we got to like these big, more climactic scenes, it really suffered from... I had not enough time planning exactly what they wanted to do and it felt as though they really just said let's fix it in post because yeah. I mean the final big battle scene li literally looked like it was 
off a video game. Yeah, and not a good video game either. This is the wrong type of stuff. And it was the, the problem was is that so much time was spent on, I guess, banter between characters as opposed to actually giving them a reason, like you a reason to care about them. I think it's this weird kind of trap that people fall into when they look at like Tarantino movies and they're like, oh, these characters talk a lot, therefore we like them. It's like, no, the groundwork is there to make us care about what these characters are after, what they want, who they are. It's not just characters saying cool things that entertain us. And I think that's part of the problem here. As much as those scenes where characters are saying witty stuff is the best part of the movie and it's super entertaining, it also took us out of being able to connect with people when it mattered. 100%. Uh, huh. Huh? One of my favourite things about this film, though, was definitely the score. Daniel Pemberton yes. actually threw it down once again. Obviously, he did Man From U.N.C.L.E. and he did Steve Jobs. Which and he was... did The Order as well. Yes, he did. Yes, the, the video game The Order, which actually has a great soundtrack regardless of that game being pretty average. But yeah, when it needed to boost scenes, it really boosted scenes. But, I mean, some of those scenes were just... I was like... Mm. I was like, the scores like got us going, yep, let's do it. And the scene's like... Uh huh. But at the same time, as we're saying, we did have fun with this movie. It's just something where we can understand that it's... While we did have fun, it's not very good. It really is, I, I mean, for me, it's, yeah, it's just not that good at and all. And the worst part of the thing is, as much as you kind of have an enjoyable time at the cinema, down the road in a few years, this film's gonna age real, real, real badly. Poorly. And it makes me question, what the fuck are you thinking, Warner Brothers, investing almost like $300 million in this film when you account for marketing as well as the budget? Like, why? Why would you invest that much? Because you don't have a bigger game plan. Yeah, okay, yep. you make well, you want to make you want to make like a King Arthur extended universe. Yeah, and they Fuck went me. for it. No they one wants that. No though. one wants that. No, you'd rather be better off splitting that budget into like four smaller films, getting better directors on, and that way you get films pumping out. Like you get your La La Land, your Arrival, your Deadpool. Films last year that all did really well on that mid-range budget. Big films like this are going to be big flops if they don't go right, and this didn't have enough there to make it sell, as we can see. Yeah, I We are know. glad that we saw it, we did have a good time, but it is not very good at and all. And it's just unfortunate, and I mean, kind of like, one of the greatest writers in the world right now, Kenneth Lonergan, actually loves the lore of King Arthur. Like, the original book by Thomas Malory, Le Morte, Arthur, or whatever, he said, he said, I want to write this one day, now I yeah. want to get it right, because everyone's getting it wrong, and once again, they just kind of got it. Wrong. So we could see that one day, but for now this film has a lot of fun, but it mostly doesn't work, and that's why I'm giving it a 4.8 out of 10. Why well, I'm giving it a 5, because I still had a good time at the cinemas. Yeah, Hello. I guess that's important, but oh. I don't think anyone else is really going to go see this now, so... No. Oh well, it's bombed. So that was our review of King Arthur. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate did it? Did you like this video? Of course you did. Crave more banter. If so, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel down there somewhere on... YouTube. Oh, oh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, God. and Twitter. We're all at it. Breaking Banner, check us out. We haven't done reviews in so long.